Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've got an interesting topic for you today. How many of you consider yourselves confrontational? And I know I've asked you that before. But so many of us get into situations where we're having to sit down with an employee and you don't want it to be a negative situation and you want it to be as positive as possible and you want it to be timely. Always remember the timeliness. So you're sitting here trying to do all the things that you feel you need to do. And I have talked to so many that will tell me all their experiences of that particular meeting or that conversation. And I listen and I'm, I'm you know, looking for very specific little triggers or, or tipping points in the uh, conversation. In fact, I've, I've been a witness in, in so many of them. But there's one particular element, one particular thing that no matter what that conversation is, when you're talking to an individual, there's one characteristic that I am always looking for to know whether this is going to be a, a positive conversation or whether there's any hope at all. How many have you have been in a conversation and suddenly realized that the individual has hits that defensive button and they, they just absolutely lock up? In fact, they pretty much shut down and you wonder why in the world am I even having this conversation because I'm not getting through to them. I don't even know that they even remember why we're sitting here because they're taking us so far off the topic or the motion is so present that I, I don't even want to be here. And that's where I pull people aside and say, well, when you're having those kind of conversations, you probably shouldn't be. You probably should just stop the conversation and end it there until the, we can have a, a moment to take a breather on all of us. And the reason I do that is because what you're not seeing or what you're not hearing when, emotion, when uh, conversations go that way is the secret ingredient. And that's humility. Whether we realize it or not, when you're sitting down and having a conversation, that conversation is going to go so much better when the individual you're talking to shows some sense of humility. And, and let me give you some examples. Because it, we don't talk about this, and we really should. I, we don't, humility is not something we teach. It's really not even something we acknowledge. But maybe we should start thinking about that. Maybe we should start applauding people. And here, here's my list. When I'm, when I'm in the middle of a, a conversation or when even some of my students, when I'm literally, you know, sitting down with a new HR person or maybe it's a veteran who just needs some, you know, instruction. When I'm, when I'm in the HR academy and I'm giving a, a, a class, what I'm looking for is some sense of engagement where they're actually showing the signs that they're listening. And better yet... They're asking questions. When you're sitting down with a, an employee, and maybe you do have to critique them a little bit, are they showing some sense of good eye contact? They're leaning forward. They're asking you for more details. Can you explain what you mean by that? Can you show me when I may not have met your expectations? Are they engaging with you in that conversation? That's a sign of humility. How about when they take accountability? When they look at you and, and say, well, and I know this rarely happens, so I'm, I'm just, we're, we're going to pretend that it happens all the time. But think how wonderful it is when an employee looks at you and goes, you know, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. Or you're right. I'll do that next time. It's hard for them. I get it. You understand it's hard for them. But think how much more productive that meeting is when you have that 
relationship, when you're able to get to that point, are they asking for additional training? Are they asking for additional resources? How about the employee who literally looks at you and says, you know what? I don't like this. I, I really don't enjoy doing this. This is not for me. Is there anything else I can do? <laughs> and the individual who accepts the consequences, look, I'm going to need you to redo this work or I'm going to need you to you know, stay over two more hours because we have to redo this project or I need you to. And they look at you and say, yeah, that makes sense. That's humility. That's your indication. That's, that's, the, that's the bell that rings and says, hey, this is an employee I want to work with. This is an employee we can train, we can develop. And they don't even need to know that they're expressing humility. But I have been in so many encounters where the employee literally just shuts down and starts spewing out all these excuses. Well, I didn't have this, and I didn't have that, and you didn't train me, and I didn't have any idea. You never told me this. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Okay, we want to help and we want to work with you, but let's start from the beginning and let's have a conversation. Any outburst of emotion is just the opposite of humility. I don't even care if they're standing there crying, just bawling their eyes out because they got reprimanded. That is not humility. That's, that's just a breakdown. That's an emotional breakdown. And you still aren't able to work with that individual to get to the end of, or to the mean of where you want to go with that conversation because they're, they're an emotional mess. You still have to stop the conversation and wait till they're pulled back together. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't always take a situation where you have to be in a corrective action or in a disciplinary action where you appreciate a conversation as professional adults, which is basically what humility is. It's just standing there and saying, okay, I'm not perfect. We know as employers, as HR, as, as business owners, we're not perfect. So how quickly can we get an employee to be or express humility if we're not expressing humility ourselves? And that means that when you start looking at your supervisors, how many of your supervisors are taking accountability for what's going on in their department? I looked at a, a, a uh, actually it was a VP whose senior director permitted one of their employees to work at 10% of productivity. She was only billing out 10% of her time for almost nine months straight. And what we found out was that she had gotten another job with somebody else, so she didn't have 90, that 90% to give to us because we didn't keep her busy enough, so she went and picked up a job with somebody else. But did the senior director catch it? No. Did the VP ask why this person wasn't attending meetings and wasn't, wasn't getting work done or wasn't meeting milestones? No. And did he take accountability? Did, did, the, did the senior director take accountability? No. And I looked at the business owner and I said, who's, who's running the company here? Where's, where's the humility? Where? Look, if your supervisors are bringing you problems instead of solutions, they're not showing humility. They're coming and whining. If they come with you to, with a problem, great. Look, I can't deal with this. I need help. What do you suggest? That's humility. But if they're coming to you with problems and saying, hey, I, there's nothing I can do. She just won't do the work. Or I can't communicate with her. You're the one who hired her. Where's the humility? How much are productive work and time 
are you going to get from a supervisor who just can't accept change, can't be flexible, doesn't want to be bothered? And how many of you have supervisors like that? How are you going to get employees to be and express humility when their own supervisors can't admit that they're not perfect and that they make mistakes. I tell some of my clients, actually all, if my clients share with me these circumstances, one of the first things I'll say is, well, how did the employee react to the information? When you sat down and told her that she was going to be put on a written warning, how did they react? And if that client says, well, she said she needs more training in here and she said that she'll try to you know, get to work in, uh, sooner or she's going to stay for additional uh, instruction or if they give me that kind of feedback, I'll say, that's an employee you want to invest in. Let's stick it out with her. Let's help her fight through this. But if the client looks at me and says, well, huh, he stormed out, he threw th- things, you know, it's, it's, it's never his fault, um, he doesn't even understand why we're, we're criticizing him for that. I say, cut bait. That's the employee you want to write up. That's the employee that we don't have time for because that's all they'll ever do. So how many of you are looking for humility? And by the way, you deserve it. You deserve it. Your business, your company deserves it. And the employees deserve humility from us. It's a a work in progress. But you know what? When we know that it's worth it and that we're all going to make mistakes together and we're going to admit to them, work through them, it makes it so much easier to go to work. So go back. See how much humility you can find in your business, in your company, in your teams. And if you don't think that your supervisor is the one who should be leading your team because he's not or she's not admitting that they're not perfect or they're not flexible, get them out of the position. They're doing you no favors there if they can't express humility. But again, that's just my opinion because you've been listening (laughs) to the Human Resource 